The Persecution Under Aurelian, A. D. 274. The principal sufferers were, Felix, Bishop of Rome. He was the first martyr to Aurelian's petulancy, being beheaded on the 22nd of December, in the same year. Agapetus, a young gentleman, who sold his estate, and gave the money to the poor, was seized as a Christian, tortured, and then beheaded at Pronest, a city within a day's journey of Rome. These are the only martyrs left upon record during this reign, as it was soon put to a stop by the emperor's being murdered by his own domestics, at Byzantium. Aurelian was succeeded by Tacitus, who was followed by Probus, as the latter was by Carus, this emperor being killed by a thunderstorm, his sons, Carnius and Numerian, succeeded him, and during all these reigns the church had peace. Diocletian mounted the imperial throne, a. d. 284, at first he showed great favor to the Christians. In the year 286, he associated Maximian with him in the empire, and some Christians were put to death before any general persecution broke out. Among these were Felician and Primus, two brothers. Marcus and Marcellianus were twins, natives of Rome, and of noble descent. Their parents were heathens, but the tutors, to whom the education of the children was entrusted, brought them up as Christians. Their constancy at length subdued those who wished them to become pagans, and their parents and whole family became converts to a faith they had before reprobated. They were martyred by being tied to posts, and having their feet pierced with nails. After remaining in this situation for a day and a night, their sufferings were put an end to by thrusting lances through their bodies. Zoe, the wife of the jailer, who had the care of the before-mentioned martyrs, was also converted by them, and hung upon a tree, with a fire of straw lighted under her. When her body was taken down, it was thrown into a river, with a large stone tied to it, in order to sink it. In the year of Christ 286, a most remarkable affair occurred, a legion of soldiers, consisting of 6,666 men, contained none but Christians. This legion was called the Theban Legion, because the men had been raised in Thebias, they were quartered in the east until the Emperor Maximian ordered them to march to Gaul, to assist him against the rebels of Burgundy. They passed the Alps into Gaul, under the command of Mauritius, Candidus, and Exuperness, their worthy commanders, and at length joined the Emperor. Maximian, about this time, ordered a general sacrifice, at which the whole army was to assist, and likewise he commanded that they should take the oath of allegiance and swear, at the same time, to assist in the extirpation of Christianity in Gaul. Alarmed at these orders, each individual of the Theban legion absolutely refused either to sacrifice or take the oaths prescribed. This so greatly enraged Maximian, that he ordered the legion to be decimated, that is, every tenth man to be selected from the rest, and put to the sword. This bloody order having been put in execution, those who remained alive were still inflexible, when a second decimation took place, and every tenth man of those living was put to death. This second severity made no more impression than the first had done, the soldiers preserved their fortitude and their principles, but by the advice of their officers they drew up a loyal remonstrance to the emperor. This, it might have been presumed, would have softened the emperor, but it had a contrary effect, for, enraged at their perseverance and unanimity, he commanded that the whole legion should be put to death, which was accordingly executed by the other troops, who cut them to pieces with their swords, September 22, 286. Alban, from whom Street Albans, in Hertfordshire, received its name, was the first British martyr. Great Britain had received the Gospel of Christ from Lucius, the first Christian king, but did not suffer from the rage of persecution for many years after. He was originally a pagan, but converted by a Christian ecclesiastic, named Amphibolus, whom he sheltered on account of his religion. The enemies of Amphibolus, having intelligence of the place where he was secreted, came to the house of Alban, in order to facilitate his escape, when the soldiers came, he offered himself up as the person they were seeking for. The deceit being detected, the governor ordered him to be scourged, and then he was sentenced to be beheaded, June 22, a. d. 287. The Venerable Bede assures us, that, upon this occasion, the executioner suddenly became a convert to Christianity, and entreated permission to die for Alban, or with him. Obtaining the latter request, they were beheaded by a soldier, 
who voluntarily undertook the task of executioner. This happened on the 22nd of June, A. D. 287, at Verulam, now Street Albans, in Hertfordshire, where a magnificent church was erected to his memory about the time of Constantine the Great. The edifice, being destroyed in the Saxon Wars, was rebuilt by Offa, King of Mercia, and a monastery erected adjoining to it, some remains of which are still visible, and the church is a noble Gothic structure. Faith, a Christian female, of Aquitan, in France, was ordered to be broiled upon a gridiron, and then beheaded, a. d. 287. Quentin was a Christian, and a native of Rome, but determined to attempt the propagation of the gospel in Gaul, with one Lucian, they preached together in Amiens, after which Lucian went to Bumaris, where he was martyred. Quentin remained in Picardy, and was very zealous in his ministry. Being seized upon as a Christian, he was stretched with pulleys until his joints were dislocated, his body was then torn with wire scourges, and boiling oil and pitch poured on his naked flesh, lighted torches were applied to his sides and armpits, and after he had been thus tortured, he was remanded back to prison, and died of the barbarities he had suffered, October 31, A. D. 287. His body was sunk in the Somme.